Welcome everybody to the first installment of my uh, YouTube videos. Um, like I said in my previous video, this is my first foray into this, so please be kind. Before we get started, just like to say a big thank you to those that have thus far been supporting me on Patreon, as well as uh, the community at Level 1 Tech, who uh, have been both promoting the work I've been doing, as well as uh, through donations, which you'll find out about a bit later in this video as well. I figured it's best to explain my setup and what I'm doing and what I'm working on. Um, recently in the public eye, I've been working on QEMU, um, which for those that don't know, is a uh, Linux emulator. Um, well, not Linux, but it's an emulator that runs under Linux and it supports uh, kernel mode virtualization or KVM. So it can do um, basically one-to-one emulation or not so much emulation but uh, execution of a virtual machine on your pc allowing you to virtualize whatever you need just like other software like virtualbox or zen server um, or zen by itself um, qemu is quite capable but the reason why i've started playing with zen over the last probably year now uh, sorry not zen qemu over the last year now um, is primarily for the ability it now has to pass through um, PCI devices into a virtual machine, um, namely video cards. If you've been following anything on Level 1 Techs uh, by Wendell especially, um, he's done a lot of um, experimentation and documentation about how you can pass a graphics card into a virtual machine and allow the virtual machine to have physical access to that graphics card um, which then allows the virtual machine to basically run native uh, 3D acceleration within, well, a virtual machine. Uh, personally, for me, this is a pretty major requirement. Um, my day job, I'm a Linux administrator, um, software developer specifically under Linux, and personally, I love the Linux environment. I can't stand Windows, um, never grew fond of Macintosh, um, and so Linux is where I like to live day to day. But, like most nerds, I like to play games, and I like to do the odd thing that does require Windows, and a lot of that stuff, although for games it's changing recently, especially with Steam coming to Linux, um, and the great support Wine's now coming in with the Vulkan um, layer it's putting in there, um, it's been a problem for a long time that I haven't been able to play the games I want and switch back to work at a whim, because a lot of the work I do is on-demand support, um, and having to reboot a dual boot machine into Windows to play games and then reboot to go and do some tech support and then vice versa becomes an issue. So the solution to that for me is virtual machines. Now, the system I'm currently running is a bit of a beast thanks to the Level 1 community. Uh, after they saw the work I'd been doing, they kindly donated um, the cash required and the parts as well build up a machine to basically experiment and build this kind of a uh, platform to make it easier for those that are in my situation to run Windows on Linux. Uh, now the system I'm using was, uh, like I said, donated. It's a Threadripper Ripper 1950X, uh, 64 gig of memory, and I'm running two GPUs, two high-end GPUs. One's a GeForce 1080 Ti, and the other is a AMD uh, Vega 56, I believe it was flashed into a 64 before I received it. Um, but everything other than the video, the uh, 1080 Ti in this machine was donated to me very kindly. Um, the machine's set up a bit different to how most people would envision a VM. Uh, I'm actually running multiple virtual machines on the one PC, including this machine you're seeing now. Um, this is a Debian installation in a VM. Uh, we'll do cat proc CPU. You'll see there I've got eight cores of a 16 core 32 thread processor. So I've really only got four cores and I'm running hyper threading. So there's eight, eight threads here. Um, so this is a virtual machine. Uh, the host machine is running headless. So I can actually connect into that. Uh, this machine on my system is called Moya. And if we go cat proc CPU info, you'll see all 32 cores there available. So that's the actual host machine. But like I said, that's headless. Um, the two video cards I do have, the AMD 
Vega is actually running um, this workstation that you're looking at right now. Uh, the GeForce 1080 Ti is actually passed into a Windows virtual machine, which is over here. And unlike before, I can switch between Windows and Linux instantly. Um, this is seamless and this is live. So you can see that it's fully functional, fully working. Um, we can got sound. And yes, that's royalty free sound. So uh, music, so I don't have to worry about licensing on that. And the other nice thing about this is this is a virtual machine too, which is why I can switch to and from. Now, I'm not using any switching, anything else. This is a uh, looking glass, if you haven't seen it before. Um, if we switch out a full screen, you can see this is actually an application. Um, and if you haven't seen the kind of performance you get out of this thing, we actually get um, native 3D performance. So we can run like the Valley Benchmark. Uh, full warning, there is an issue with this program um, in that uh, initially we'll have low frame rate until I tab in and out of it. You see we're getting 60 frames a second here at the moment. Um, but looking glass is a bit jerky. That's something to do with the Windows Capture API. That's not actually a looking glass problem, but if we tab in and out, it seems to correct it. But we've still got a few issues. This is a work in progress build of looking glass you're seeing right now. Anyway, um, so you can see that Windows is performing exceptionally well for a virtual machine. So that's a virtual machine. This is a virtual machine. Um, running on top of a host machine. Now I can't show you the whole host, it is running some proprietary stuff as well as like as in things needed for my business. Um, this is also running services to service my clients um, and as such I can't show everything, I'm sorry. But I'll show you what I can. Now I'm recording this live, I'm not post-processing my audio. Um, I've got an interesting audio chain I've set up over the last few days so I can do this recording. and. The audio chain is a bit different to what most people are doing. Um, because I've got two VMs and one sound card, I want them to all share the same sound card. I want to be able to mix the audio and I want to be able to easily manage it and handle the volume levels of different things. For example, I'm using um, Pulse Audio for most everything. Almost. Um, I've actually set up Jack on the host. So you can see here, We've got Jack running and that's running as a system service. So I've actually created a system uh, I get in there. We've got a Jack service. So this is simple. This basically launches Jack as a daemon, it as all the Jack daemon as the pulse user on the server and it's configured to run without dbus and that's what this environment variable is for this jack no audio reservation um this launches at startup after it launches we're also starting up pulse audio as a system service so you'll see here this requires jack to run and then it starts the pulse audio server and or kills it and i've done a lot of experimentation with pulse audio to get it to um basically work i wasn't using jack up until about a week ago in this link and i'll explain why shortly but first i'll show you the um uh pulse audio con uh, configuration if i can spell uh system.pa because running as a system service uh, a lot of comments in here but the important stuff is that i've disabled the module detection so it doesn't try to access the sound card directly uh, it won't be able to anyway because Jack's taken it over and we've specifically told it to load the Jack sync and the Jack source so that's going to tie Pulse straight into Jack natively which it actually works really well I'm surprised at how successful this is uh, everything else in here is pretty much standard except for uh, this stuff here is me experimenting which I am not using anymore uh, but this one here um, sets up Pulse Audio to listen on the local network. Um, you see I've got two IP ranges, both the loopback for this machine itself and a subnet which is actually um, a vSwitch subnet of my virtual machines on this PC or specifically my work machine and my Windows machine. 
uh, sorry, no, not the Windows machine. The Windows machine's separate. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Oh, I can't recall off the top of my head, but I've got a lot of virtual machines running here. Um, so when the VM runs, um, it's specifically this one, the Linux virtual machine, it's got, if we open another terminal, you'll see in the etc pulse client.conf, we've actually got in here default server, Moya, which is the name of the host machine. So I'm not emulating sound hardware in the Linux guest. It's not using ALSA directly, or it's not emulating an AC97 or Intel HDA. Pulse is literally streaming straight to the host, and because it's localhost, it's loopback, there's no latency in that. It's like sub milliseconds, so um, you can't hear that anyway. I think it's like 30 milliseconds or 35 milliseconds of delay before you can actually hear a delay in audio like before you can perceive it. Uh, so that's working. And if I run something like uh, air view control, you'll see we have in here ALSA plugin for QMU. That's because this is connecting back to the host. We're seeing the Pulse Audio services that are connected to the host. And you can see QMU for the Windows here. That's the Windows virtual machine. And we can control it from this guest for its volume control, which is really handy. It's great when I want to push the volume down in that because it's a game and I need to sort of mute it or do something else, come back and work here and sort of switch between tasks. Uh, for recording, you see OBS is clearly running there recording things now, but you see the source is like Jack. You got Jack all there. Outputs the Jack Sync, which is what we saw before. Again, we're tied back to the host Pulse Audio instance, which is connected to Jack. And then the input again, Jack source. So we get the ability now to do our volume mixing for different applications that they, as they run. For example, on another screen you can't see, I have Audacious running. There you go. So that'll pop up. I can adjust its volume individually. Um, really handy. Uh, the reason for running Jack though in this mix is because, well, I want to filter my microphone. I only have a headset microphone and it's quite noisy. Um, I do have a decent sound card in the machine. I've got a um, Asus uh, Aorus, uh, not Aorus, uh, I can't remember, hold on. We'll have a look. There you go, there's my LSPCI of this host machine. You'll see there we have, uh, if we look for audio, yeah, CMI 8038, uh, 8788, that's a Asus um, Zonar XD, that's what it was. I believe it's the XD that I've modified. I've actually gone and built a EFI cage for it out of some copper and sold ore to it to shield it because it gets a lot of interference on the video cards in the machine that were messing with this audio. And it still does a bit, which is why I'm running Jack. But because I'm running Jack, I can also do a lot more things with it, a lot more filtering with the audio and adjust for volume and noise suppression, background noise suppression, um, which is really handy. I actually really like this stuff. So what we'll do is I'll actually connect to the host as the Pulse user and I'll forward an X session across so I can run X applications. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll actually show you one more thing. We actually have, I should be able to read it from this user. Uh, we've got one more service installed, uh, sorry, launching, one more program launching as a service, which is uh, Kala. And this is setting up LADSPA filters for Jack. And I've got a requirement here that Pulse Studio has to start before it launches this because the uh, configuration Kala I have is dependent on the Pulse um, sync and source existing in Jack. So Pulse has to start first. Once Pulse is, uh, once that's set up, Carla starts and Carla's, it's running right now, so I can't stop it because obviously we need to record this and hear this. Um, but you'll see I've got several configurations there. I've built uh, version three is what I'm on now, um, based on different plugins I've played with and so on. Uh, if we're on Carla, I believe I can run this at the same time and it shouldn't muck things up. There we go. Uh, you can see we have, yes, it's dis I know it is connected, uh, but we see the taps for the other one. It's loaded in this profile twice, so that's interesting. I didn't actually know Carla could do that, so we'll just 
quit out. Hopefully this doesn't muck up the recording. Doesn't look like it. We'll just run Carla without loading anything and it should. Let us view the current patch bay. Yes, it does. Okay, excellent. You can see here we've got the jack sync. So that's the audio coming from Pulse Audio out to the system device, to the card itself. So that's I'm doing nothing with. It's just straight through. Although we could a lot, a lot of filters you could throw in there. But here's my input for the microphone. Um, which microphone has mono, so I'm only picking off one channel. There's no need to pick off both. Uh, through an expander, that sort of removes some noise from the input. And then I found this wonderful plugin on GitHub. Um, so there's a built binary of it. It's a noise suppressor. I'll actually put that in the um, comments below for anyone that wants it. It's wonderful, this thing. I can't remember the sites. I'll have to look that up after this. Uh, I take it through a de-ether, which looks for the sounds in audio and sort of brings them back down. Um, everything here sort of drops the volume level somewhat, so I amplify it, bring it back up to a good level. Run it through an equalizer to correct the sort of tinny sound of this microphone. And then a limiter that sort of catches any peaks in the output and brings them back down. Uh, it's actually a fast limiter if you want to know what type I'm using and it's filtering the final output before feeding it into the jack source which then OBS picks up and I'm not doing any filtering in OBS it's coming straight from this into OBS to record so that's why I'm using jack and as you can imagine this setup has taken quite some time to figure out tune and tweak there's sort of no one else doing this um, being able to feed the audio between the virtual machines the way it's happening for example um, the way the VMs are running um, it's taking the output from the Windows VM, for example, into ALSA via the Pulse Audio shim. That's part of Pulse Audio. And then feeding that into Pulse Audio and 3Jack. The reason for using ALSA in QEMU is the Pulse Audio support in QEMU is unstable. Um, as you might know if you're already playing with it, Pulse Audio, you get crackling audio, you get all sorts of issues with the audio, and I found especially just recently that if you do it this way, um, especially if you use the AC97 Windows device, a virtual device, if you can install a signed driver for it um, under Windows or turn driver uh, signing enforcement off or use a virtual Windows that doesn't require driver signing enforcement um, and run that, the audio actually works much better and much more reliably using ALSA and the latency is very good too. Um, as you could see before, we can just run stuff. And you'll see, we can just click and skip and that's instant. So we're not seeing a delay in audio. Um, I think that's all I've got to share for this time, this episode. Um, if there's anything here that I've sort of glanced over that you'd like more detail on, please ask me in the comments below. Um, I might do a follow up. And if there's any suggestions on any improvements I can make to the formatting of the way I'm recording or the information I'm presenting or any topics you'd like covered again, please ask. Uh, this is a new channel and I'm getting started. Uh, if I'm speaking too quick, I apologize. I'm a little bit nervous, like this is the first time I've done anything like this. But I've been requested quite a few times to try to um, share some of this stuff in a more open way. I plan to also put some videos up on development sessions. I may even stream them alive depending on what I need to do um, along the lines of Looking Glass. <laughs>